How can my 27.29 be under 38, but I have breast chronically fermenting cells met in liver and lymph nodes? Okay, for those of you who are not aware of it, their CA 27.29 is considered a breast tumor marker. So is uh, CA 15-3, and so is CEA to some degree for breast. You know, there are different ones, right? CA 125 for ovary, and uh, CEA is for, CEA is very, very broad. It can be, it's supposed to be colon, but it can also be lung. Because and, 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 the, bi the, the biology, the, the, the biology of what we call tumor markers is not to be a tumor. It's not there. It's not on your cell to be a tumor marker. It's there to do other things. It's just that because there's a normal range. So for example, since CA125 is ovarian, it's supposed to be for ovarian, chronically fermenting ovarian cells, right? It's supposed to be that. So how can a male have a normal CA125? And a male can even have a high CA125 without ovaries. Males and men don't have ovaries. How can they have a high CA125 with certain conditions like ascites? Why? Because CA125 is not a tumor. CEA is not a tumor. Mark. CA27.29 is not, a, I mean, they're called tumor markers because they're associated with certain areas that certain organs that have chronically fermented, but they're not always high. I had women with breast tumors really large and both their 15 dash Point three and their a um, fifteen dash three and their twenty seven twenty nine were normal. CA was normal. So whether it's normal or not doesn't tell you anything about that. However, for those people who have a tumor marker that is related to their chronically fermenting situation. So for example, you have a colon chronically fermenting colon cells and your CA is high, right? And then you do some sort of treatment, it comes down and the, the CT scan shows that it's less and then it grows back up. So if you've seen, if you can see that this kind of is a marker, then it is. It doesn't mean it's causing it or anything. It's just, and it doesn't mean that's what it's designed for. So what I'm saying, Simone, is that, now I don't know I, if I were talking to you face to face, I'd say, well, was it ever high? Was it ever elevated? And have you looked at the 15-3 and the CEA? But we cannot just look at what they call tumor markers, okay? Because the reason we can't just look at tumor markers is because as I said, we don't know what they mean. Also, if they go up, does that mean that the tumors are growing? We don't know. So is this person saying their tumor, their tumor marker was 140.9 the first time at the beginning? Yeah, so it can be high. And if it is high and you've got a certain kind of then it, then it is related, right? And then you can rely on it to some degree to give you evidence of whether or not your treatment is working or not. However, keep this in mind. The guy I was talking about that had a colon, chronically fermenting colon cell, his CEA was like a normal CEA goes up to around five. So his was about 80. And then it went up to 120, then it went up to 200, then it went to 400, 800, 900. And I said, well, we better do a scan to see what's going on. We did a scan, 90% was gone, which means now, what do we know now? We know that the reason the CEA, the, 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 the tumor, marker was increasing so much is because the, the uh, chronically fermenting tumor was um, was dying so quickly it was spilling more of the antigen into the blood so that tells us that if it's being killed or growing it could increase the, the tumor marker so again it doesn't tell us it doesn't give us we can't rely on it